Hello, this is Abby from ollieholly.com. In today's video, I will be showing you how to crochet this Christmas stocking. If you're interested in following along with a written pattern, you'll find the free pattern on my blog and the printable PDF in my shop. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Throughout this video, I will be working the waistcoat stitch. The waistcoat stitch is a modified single crochet stitch that gives your crocheted item a knitted look. The only difference between the standard single crochet and the waistcoat stitch is where you insert your hook into. I will go over the basics of the waistcoat stitch here, but if you want to learn a little bit more about it or see the way the stitch is worked in more detail, I have a more dedicated video tutorial and I'll link it in the description box down below. And just a note before we get started, this pattern will only work with the waistcoat stitch. The tension required for the waistcoat stitch is very different from the tension you would typically have for a standard single crochet. If you substitute the waistcoat stitch out with a standard single crochet, your piece will look different. Also, please note that this is an intermediate pattern. If you are new to crochet, I highly recommend you start with an easier project like this poisonous mushroom ornament. Here are the materials I will be using in this video. The yarn I'm using for my stocking is Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick. It's a super bulky weight yarn that's nice and thick so the stocking works up quickly once you get a hang of the waistcoat stitch. This yarn comes in lots of different fun solid and heathered colors that you can mix and match. This color that I will be using as my main color is called grass, and this one here that I will be using as my accent color is called fern. To pair with the yarn, I'm using a 12mm crochet hook. I'll also be using a pair of scissors, a stitch marker, and a jumbo darning needle. And this part is completely optional, but I'll also be using a few pom-pom makers to make pom-poms to decorate my stocking with. I will link all the materials that I use in this video in the description box down below. To make it easier, I've labeled each part of the stocking here so that you'll understand which part we are working on when we get to it. And here are the abbreviations that I will be using in this video. And just a note here, throughout this video I will be referring to the waistcoat increase as increase. To start, I'm going to make a magic circle with my accent color. I'm placing the yarn tail pointing downwards on my palm, and I'm wrapping the working end around my fingers and back across the top of the tail to form an X. Then I'm flipping my hand over, inserting my hook under the right strand and over the left. Then I'm pulling the left strand under the right, and turning my hook up towards me to create a loop on my hook. Then I'm yarning over and drawing it through the loop on my hook. For round one, I'm going to loosely work six single crochet into the magic circle. I'm making sure to keep my tension for this first round a little looser than I normally would. So I'm inserting my hook into the magic circle, yarn over to draw a loop up. Then I'm going to pull my hook to the side a little to make the second loop on my hook a little looser than I normally would. Then finally, I'm going to yarn over one more time and draw it through the two loops on my hook. In round two, I will need to insert my hook into the center of the front of each stitch in the next round. So crocheting a little looser here will make it easier for me in the next round. So let's see that again for the next stitch. I'm inserting my hook into the circle, yarn over to draw a loop up. Then I'm going to pull my hook to the side a little to make this loop here about double the length of the first loop. Then finally, I'm going to yarn over one more time and draw it through the two loops on my hook. So that's my second stitch. Three. And before I continue, I'm going to close up my magic circle just a little bit to make it easier to work. 
four, five, and six. Now that I have all six stitches made, I'm going to pull on my yarn tail lightly to close up the magic circle. I'm not going to close the magic circle fully because I need to access the fronts of these stitches in the next round. And if you pull your magic circle shut too tightly, you will not be able to see the stitches clearly in the next round. From this point on, I'm going to start working the waistcoat stitch. Do not join to the first stitch of the round with a slip stitch because we will be working in continuous rounds. In round two, we will be increasing in each stitch. To work the waistcoat stitch, we will be crocheting into the post of the stitch instead of the top loops up here. When working a normal single crochet, you would locate the two top loops and insert your hook under the top loops, then work your single crochet. But for the waistcoat stitch, you will need to locate the front of each stitch. The front of each stitch looks like the letter V. So this is my first stitch of the round, second, third, and so on. And because my yarn is quite fuzzy, it can be difficult to see where the stitches are, especially also because my yarn is heathered. So a good way to determine where the front of your stitch is, is to look at the top loops. So this is a top loop from the first stitch, and this is a top loop of the second stitch. Where the two top loops meet, right below it is where you will be inserting your hook into. Going between these two arms of the V and out the back. So for my next stitch, so this one here is the first stitch. So that's the second top loop, third top loop, and right beneath it is where the second stitch is. So I'll be inserting my hook right between the two legs of that V right there. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have a more dedicated video tutorial, and you'll find it linked in the description box down below. Into my first stitch for round two, I'm going to insert my hook into the center of this V here and out the back. Then I'm yarning over to draw a loop up and I'm lifting my hook up to the side to make this second loop a little looser. Yarn over, and I'm drawing it through the two loops. I'm going to mark this first stitch of my round with a stitch marker so that it's easier for you to see where I'm at throughout this video. And because I'm increasing in this second round, I'm going to work one more stitch into the same stitch I worked the first stitch into. Yarn over to draw a loop up, making sure that second loop is nice and loose. Yarn over and draw it through the two loops. And as a reminder, if you're having a hard time seeing where the stitch is because the yarn is too fuzzy, Locate the top loops, and right below where the two top loops meet is where your stitch is going to be. So here's my second stitch, and I'm going to work my waistcoat stitch. I'm inserting into the center, yarn over to draw a loop up, and yarn over and draw it through the two loops on my hook. Then I'm inserting my hook back into the same stitch to work the second increase stitch. Continue working the waistcoat increase into each stitch. You should have a total of 12 stitches by the time you are done with round 2. If you've crocheted loosely enough in the first round, then you'll have an easier time with this round. Pause here to continue working the rest of round 2, and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Into my final stitch of round two, I'm going to work one more increase. And just a note here, this final stitch will usually be a little bit tighter. This means that you may need to wiggle your hook into it with a little bit more effort. 
And now that I've completed round two of my piece, I'm going to fully close up the magic circle by pulling on the tail. In round three, I'm going to be alternating between working one waistcoat stitch, then increasing in the next, then repeating that all the way around. So what that looks like is waistcoat, increase, waistcoat, increase, then repeating that until you reach the end. Into my first stitch, I'm going to work one waistcoat stitch. And remember, if you're having a hard time locating where the front of your stitch is, just look for where the top loops meet. So this here is my first stitch, and then into the second stitch, I'm going to increase. After this, I'm just going to repeat the set now. So I'm working a waistcoat stitch into this next stitch here, and then increase in the next. Pause here to work the rest of the round and I'll meet you at the beginning of the next round. By the time you are done with round 3, you should have a total of 18 stitches. In round four, work one waistcoat stitch into each stitch. Pause here to work round four and I'll meet you at the beginning of round five. In round five, Alternate between working 5 waistcoat stitch, then increasing, repeating that all the way around. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, increase. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, increase, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, increase. So 1, 2, Three, four, five, increase. Pause here to work the rest of round 5 and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 6. You should have a total of 21 stitches by the time you are done with round 5. In round 6, work one waistcoat stitch into each stitch except for the final stitch of the round. For the final stitch of the round, work a slip stitch into the post of the stitch. Pause here to work up until the second to the last stitch of this round and I'll meet you to work the final stitch of this round. So into this final stitch here, I'm just going to work a slip stitch. So I'm inserting my hook into the front of the stitch, yarn over to draw a loop up, and then drawing that loop through the loop on my hook. I'll be changing to my main color for the next round, so I'm going to fasten off here and work a seamless join in the round. I've cut the working end and I pulled my hook up to fasten off. And now I'm threading my yarn tail onto a darning needle. I'm going to locate the top loops of the second stitch of the round. So that's one and two. I'm inserting my needle under the top loops of the second stitch and out the back. Pull through. Then I'm inserting it back into the center of the top loops of my slip stitch and out the back. I'm also going to trim up my yarn tail from my magic circle just to keep it out of the way. In round 7, start with a slip knot on your hook of the main color of the stocking. For this round, I'm going to work one waistcoat stitch into each stitch, starting from the first stitch of the round. 
So I'm inserting my hook into the center of the front of the stitch and out the back. Then I'm yarning over to draw a loop up, and then yarning over one more time to draw through the two loops to create my first stitch. Pause here to work the rest of this round and I will meet you towards the end of this round to show you how to sandwich in the yarn tail from the slip knot. When you get to the final few stitches of this round, you can lay the loose yarn tails over the working end to crochet the loose ends into the back of the last few stitches. So I'm just laying the yarn tail over my working end and working my stitch as usual. Doing so will sandwich those tails into the back of my stitches like so. Into the next stitch, I'm doing the same thing. And then for the final stitch, because we worked a slip stitch in the previous round, I'm going to work directly into the stitch I worked the slip stitch into, which is this stitch right here. So I'm just going to work one waistcoat stitch into that stitch there. And then before I move on, I'm going to pull on my yarn tails to tighten up that gap between the first and the last stitch of the round. For rounds eight to 13, which is the next six rounds, work one waistcoat stitch into each stitch. For the final stitch of round 13, work a slip stitch instead of a single crochet. Pause here to work rounds eight to 13 and I will meet you at the end of round 13. So I've now worked rounds 8 to 13, so that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Into the final stitch for round 13, I'm going to work a slip stitch into the center of the stitch. I'm then going to fasten off and work a seamless join in the round. So I'm just cutting my yarn tail and pulling my hook up to fasten off. Then I'm threading my yarn tail onto a darning needle locating the second stitch of the round, so that's one and two, and inserting my needle underneath the top loops of the second stitch and out the back, then back into the center of the top loops of my slip stitch and out the back. Next, I'm going to start working on the heel. For the heel, instead of working the waistcoat stitch, I'll be working my single crochet as I normally would. So that means I'm inserting my hook underneath the top loops of the stitches that I'm working into. I'm starting with a slip knot of the accent color on my hook, and I'm picking up a single crochet in the first stitch of the round. So that's the false stitch created by the seamless join in the round right here. For the first row of the heel, work 12 single crochet. So I'm picking up my first stitch in the false stitch created by the seamless join. Then I'm going to work 11 more single crochet. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. To set up for row two of the heel, chain one and turn. I'm going to start row two by decreasing the first two stitches. So I'm skipping the chain I just made and I'm going to decrease the first two stitches. To do so, I'm inserting my hook into the first stitch. Then I'm yarning over to draw a loop up, and then inserting my hook into the next stitch. Yarn over again to draw another loop up. I now have three loops on my hook, and I'm going to yarn over once more and draw it through all three loops on my hook. Next, I'm going to work eight single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, 
six, seven, and eight. Then I'm just going to decrease the final two stitches. So insert, yarn over to draw a loop up. Insert into the final stitch, yarn over to draw another loop up. Yarn over, draw through all three loops. To set up for row three, chain one and turn. In row three, I'm going to decrease, work six single crochet, then decrease one more time. So just like in the previous row, I'm going to skip the chain I just made and decrease the first two stitches. Then I'm going to work six single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Then for the final two stitches, I'm just going to decrease. You should have a total of eight stitches by the time you are done. To set up for row four, chain one and turn. In row four, I'm going to work a decrease stitch, four single crochet, then decrease. So that's decrease, then one, two, three, four, then decrease the last two stitches. So for row five, we're going to chain one, turn, then we're going to decrease, work two single crochet, then decrease. So that's a decrease, one, two, and decrease. For row six, chain one, then turn. To start, I'm going to decrease twice. So that's my first decrease stitch. And my second. The next part of row six is where it can get a little bit more confusing. From here, I'm going to evenly pick up five single crochet stitches along the side of the heel here. There is no specific spot for you to insert your hook into, so I'm just going to eyeball the positions of the stitches to try to make it look as evenly spread out as possible. So now I'm going to start working along the side. So that's one. And then right here, I'm going to work my second stitch. three, four, and for my fifth stitch, I want it to be a little bit closer to the base here, so I'm going to work into the side of this stitch. Then work one single crochet in the next stitch on the foot. So I'm going to locate the stitch next to where I started the heel. This stitch here is where I started the heel. So I'm going to work into the top loops of this slip stitch right next to where I started. When looking at it from behind, it's the stitch right next to the false stitch created by the seamless join in the round. That's this stitch right here. So I'm going to work my single crochet into this stitch. And if you're still unsure if you're working into the correct stitch, just flip your work over to check to see if your hook is coming out above the slip stitch here. So for row six, we've basically worked two decrease, plus the five, plus the one in the foot. To work row seven, Turn your work, but do not chain one. 
To start, I'm going to decrease. Then I'm going to work six single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. For the next part of row seven, I'm going to pick up five single crochet along this side of the heel as evenly as I can. So I think I'm going to work into these spots here. So one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, and five into the side of this stitch here. And then I'm going to work one waistcoat stitch in the next stitch on the foot. And because this stitch here belongs to this top loop that we've already worked into, I'm going to work into the stitch right next to it instead. So into this stitch here, I'm just going to work my waistcoat stitch. To work row 8, turn your work but do not chain 1. To start, I'm going to decrease. Then I'm going to work 5 single crochet. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. After working the 5 single crochet, Fasten off and work a seamless join in the round. I've already cut my yarn tail, so I'm just going to pull my hook up to fasten off. To work the seamless join in the round, I've thread my yarn tail onto a darning needle. I'm locating the top loops of the second stitch from the round. So that's one and two. And for this, I'm going to insert the needle from the back to the front, going underneath the top loops of that stitch then pulling through. Then I'm inserting my needle into the center of the top loops of the final stitch and out the front. Working the seamless join this way will keep the yarn tail inside of the stocking. By the time you are done with the heel, you should have a total of 12 stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now that I've finished working on the heel, I can now start working on the leg of the stocking. With a slip knot of the main color on my hook, I'm going to start in the first stitch of the heel. I'm considering this stitch here the first stitch of my heel. It's lined up to the first stitch of the round on the foot. This is the first stitch from the foot, and this is the first stitch of my heel. To start the first round of the leg, I'm going to work one regular single crochet into each stitch of the heel. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six, working into the top loops created by the seamless join in the round. And then in this next stitch, I'm just going to lay the yarn tail from the seamless join over my hook so that I can crochet it into the back of my stitch here. So you can see that the yarn tail is sitting in the back and when I yarn over, it gets sandwiched into the back of my stitch. So that's seven, and I'm going to continue crocheting that yarn tail from the seamless join into the back of the next three stitches. So eight, nine, and 10. And now I'm going to drop that tail 
to work my 11th and 12th stitch. And before I continue on for the rest of the round, I'm just going to trim the yarn tail from the seamless join, just so that it's out of my way. Next, I'm going to continue working the rest of this round of the leg. I'm going to work 7 waistcoat stitch along the front of the foot. So I'm locating the next stitch, and I'm inserting my hook into the center, then working my stitch. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and for my final 3 stitches, I'm going to lay the yarn tail from the slip knot over the working end of my yarn and crochet that into the backs of the last 3 stitches. So that's 5, 6, and 7, which is our final stitch of this round. To tighten up the gap between my first and final stitch of this round, I'm going to pull on the tail of my slip knot. When you are done with this round, you should have a total of 19 stitches. From round 2 of the leg and on, we're going to continue working the waistcoat stitch all the way around. So to start, I'm going to work 12 stitches. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Into the next stitch, I'm going to work an increase stitch. So I'm inserting my hook into the stitch and working my first stitch of the increase. Then I'm going to insert my hook back into that same space to work the second stitch of my increase. Next, I'm working five waistcoat stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Into that final stitch of the round, I'm going to work another increase. By the time you are done with round two, you should have a total of 21 stitches. For rounds three to 18, work one waistcoat stitch into each stitch. That's a total of 16 rounds. Pause here to work rounds three to 18 and I'll meet you at the end of round 18. I've now worked up until the second to the last stitch of round 18 of the leg, and I have one more stitch to work for this round. For the next round, I will be changing colors. So for my final stitch, I'm going to insert my hook into the final stitch, yarn over to draw a loop up, then I'm going to take the accent color and I'm going to just loop it over my hook to draw a loop up through the two green loops on my hook, like so. I'm then going to drop the main color and pick up the accent color to work one waistcoat stitch into each stitch all the way around. And just like before, I'm going to sandwich these two tails into the backs of my first few stitches. You can pause here to work the rest of this round, and I will meet you at the end of this round to show you how to start the cuff. Thank you. 
Now that I've gone all the way around, I'm going to slip stitch into the post of the first stitch. That means I'm inserting my hook into the center of the first stitch, then working a slip stitch. In the next part, I'm going to start working the cuff of the stocking. To start, I'm going to chain eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Working into the second chain from the hook, I'm going to work one slip stitch into each chain. So into the second chain, I'm going to work my first slip stitch. Then just continue working one slip stitch into each chain for a total of seven stitches. So that's three, four, five, six, and seven. To finish up this row, I'm going to slip stitch into the same stitch that my chain is coming out of. So that's this stitch right here where we previously slip stitched into to start the cuff. And then I'm going to work another slip stitch into the post of the next stitch. By the time you are done with this row, you should have a total of 9 stitches. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on the chain, and then the 2 slip stitches here. For the next row, I'm going to turn my work. And I'm starting in the third stitch for my hook, which means that I'm skipping the first two stitches. And I'm going to work one slip stitch into each stitch, but working into the back loops only. So I'm skipping the first two stitches, then I'm inserting my hook into the center of the third stitch and out the back. Then I'm just going to work a slip stitch. I'm going to continue slip stitching into the back loops only until I get to the end of this row. Pause here to work the rest of this row and I'll meet you at the end of this row. By the time you are done with this row, you should have a total of 7 stitches. And for the final stitch of the row, I just want to point out that it can be a little bit tight to work into. So just wiggle your hook into the stitch as best as you can. When you're done, this is what your piece should look like and you should now be down to 7 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. For the next row of the cuff, I'm going to chain 1, then turn my work. For this row, I'm going to work 1 slip stitch into the back loops only of each stitch. So I'm skipping the chain I just made, and I'm inserting my hook into the center of this first stitch here and out the back, then working my slip stitch. Pause here to continue slip stitching into the back loops only of each stitch, and I'll meet you towards the end of this row to show you how to connect the cuff to the leg of the stocking. Now that I've worked the 7 slip stitches along the cuff, I'm going to join this row of the cuff to the leg of my stocking now. And just like in the first row, I'm going to work a slip stitch into the stitch that I previously slip stitched into. So that's this one right here. So I'm inserting my hook into the post of this stitch to work a slip stitch. Then into the post of the next stitch, I'm going to work one more slip stitch. I now have 9 stitches again. From here on out, just repeat working rows 2 and 3 until you've worked all around the opening of the leg. When you're working away from the leg of the stocking, you'll be working row 2. And when you're working towards the leg of the stocking, you'll be working row 3. Pause here to work the cuff all the way around the opening of the leg. Then I'll meet you towards the end to show you how to connect the two edges of the cuff together. Timestamps will be in the description box down below if you need to go back to rewash those two rows. But if you do not, here is the written pattern for rows 2 and 3 of the cuff. 
You'll also find the free written pattern on my blog. I've now worked my cuff up to the second to the last stitch of the leg. And you'll see that I've already worked outwards and I'm working my way back in. So I need to complete this row by working a slip stitch into this stitch of the leg. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the final stitch of the leg. And now I'm going to turn my work to work the next set of rows for my cuff. Just like before, I'm going to skip the first two stitches and work a slip stitch into the back loops only of each stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. To work the next row, I'm chaining one, then turning my work. Skipping the first chain that I just made, I'm going to work one slip stitch into each back loop, just like before. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the final stitch of the leg. However, I will not be slip stitching into the first stitch of the leg. So here I'm just inserting my hook into the post of that final stitch to work my final slip stitch. Next, I'm going to turn my work to begin joining the two edges of the cuff together. For this final row, I'm going to line up the chain from the beginning to the row that I just made. I'll be lining up each stitch to a chain. To do so, I'm going to be inserting my hook through both the chain and the back loops of the row that we just made. So here are the chains. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And for the final row, I'm going to work into these seven stitches here. I'll be skipping the first stitch from my hook and starting in the second stitch instead. I'm inserting my hook into the first chain, which is this chain right here, then into the back loops of the second stitch from my hook. Into this first set, I'm going to work a slip stitch, and I'm making sure I'm drawing my loop up through both the back loop and the chain. And now I'm just going to continue working a slip stitch through each set of corresponding chain and stitch. You can pause here to continue working until you hit the end of this row. This is what it should look like when you are done. Next, I'm going to cut the yarn tail and pull my hook up to fasten off. And I'm making sure to leave a long enough tail here so that I can weave my tail in later on. To weave my tail in, I've thread my yarn tail onto a darning needle and I'm just passing it under the stitches from the final row of the cuff a couple times. Then I'm trimming the excess yarn tail as close to the cuff as possible. Now you can flip the cuff over and your stocking is done. Here's what your cuff should look like when it's done. Next, I'm going to work on the strap to hang my stocking with. To start, I'm making a slip knot. And here, I'm making sure to leave a slightly longer tail than I normally would because I will need to use this tail to tie the strap onto the stocking. To set up for the strap, I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to insert my hook into the back bump of the chain. When you take a look at this chain, you'll see that the front of the chain looks like a V. And when you flip it over, you'll see a little bump in the back. I'm just going to insert my hook underneath that back bump, yarn over, and I'm going to draw it through the two loops on my hook. For this strap, I'm going to be working the fishtail chain. To work the fishtail braid, I'm locating the chain closest to my hook, and I'm going to insert my hook into the center of the chain and out the back. So I'm going to be inserting my hook 
into this space right here and out the back. There are now two loops on my hook and I'm going to yarn over and draw that loop through the two loops on my hook. So let's see that again. I'm inserting into the center of the chain closest to my hook and out the back. Then I'm yarning over and drawing it through the two loops on my hook. I'm going to continue doing this until my strap is to my desired length. For my stockings, I've chosen to make my straps five inches long. Pause here to continue working on your strap. When the length of your strap is to your liking, cut the working end and pull your hook up to fasten off. Make sure to leave a slightly longer tail here to help with tying the strap onto your stocking. And finally, I'm going to attach the strap onto the back of the cuff. I'm making sure to fold my stocking up the way I want it to sit so that I know where the strap should go. I've thread one of the yarn tails from the strap onto a darning needle, and I'm inserting the needle into the top edge here. Then I'm pulling it through to the inside of the cuff, like so. Next, I'm threading the other yarn tail onto my darning needle, and I'm going to insert the needle into the top edge of the cuff making sure to not go into the same spot the other yarn tail was thread into. Then I'm going to adjust the strap so that the fishtail side of the chain is facing outwards. And finally, I'm going to flip the cuff up and knot the two yarn tails together tightly a couple times. Trim any excess yarn tails once your knot is nice and tight. And this final part is optional. I'm making a few pom-poms to decorate my stocking with, and I'm attaching them to the cuff the exact same way that I attached a strap to the cuff. You'll find ideas on different ways you can decorate your stocking on my blog. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and if you found this tutorial helpful, you might like a few of my other videos. If you want to learn more about amigurumi or crochet in general, please consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!